Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of PCM Weekly. Let's see what's in store for us from this past week. So first up, Obsidian. They've got lots of updates that they've pushed out, and most notably is 1.9.5 on the desktop, which now includes a formula editor within the base's functionality, as well as syntax highlighting, autocomplete, and the documentation. And we can see a quick demo of it in action on Twitter. So you can see here various different um, fields, Pulls up the month, the now parameter, less the acquired, and then once it in months, which are rounded, and that feeds in to the whole of the base's functionality, and it updates all of the formulas, and you can see the documentation pops up of what it actually means. So that's a great update from the Obsidian team on that one. Version 1.9.5 mobile, this now includes all the functionality and bug fixes up to version, so basically just made it parity with the desktop version to 1.9.5, as well as a few other bug fixes. And 1.9.6, this includes bug fixes around the basis functionality, as you can see here, just released yesterday, but just improved the basis functionality and working. So great stuff from the Obsidian team on that front. Next up was OP, they've been looking at how they can improve their morning routine. And the way they've done this is using voice input and Claude code. So basically uses the voice input to create a structured daily note uh, that automatically creates calendar events, daily intentions and formatting, just made consistent every single day. And it is doing it while it's keeping Obsidian's philosophy of everything in a plain text file while adding just some voice for some convenience and making things easier. And the way he does it is he uses Super Whisper for local voice to text conversion and cloud code to process the responses in properly formatted Markdown. And you can see a little bit of a demo here, as well as a lot more information on the blog post that they made available. And you can just read through it here how he's set it up and how you can possibly implement it to your workflow. So thank you for that. And last up was how many Obsidian users are there? Uh, so Kipano posted a post on X that no one really knows how many Obsidian users there are. He thinks it's around 5 to 10 million people, but who knows? And the reason for that is that anyone can download the app, start using it, you can use it without creating an account or talking to anyone, and there are no built-in analytics. So what do you think in terms of how many Obsidian users are there out there? So that was that for Obsidian. Now Capacities, they've had a big release for July 2025 and it includes significant improvements to the modeling and the user experience. So two-way linking is now a thing, uh, just to make things a lot cleaner and smarter. Refreshed and modernized UI, completely worked the query UI with live updates, uh, better export, more customization and default templates. And as usual with the Capacities team, you can go through on this link here and see the full write-up. So the two-way linking, what it is, how you can use it, how you can set it up and a great video of it in operation and action. Uh, renaming of multi-select and design refresh, what's changed, what have they been working on and various different other things. You can go through the whole list and the team does a great job of writing up the updates and what's changed. So great stuff from the Capacities team on that one. And on top of that, uh, finally, I have to say, is that they've now made table customization a lot easier and we can now finally um, hide columns, um, so we can show them and hide them, the columns that we don't want to see, and also we can wrap text in certain columns um, as we wish. So that was something that was bugging me for quite a while, but now finally the devs have got around to fixing it. So rather than having every single text column or text cell wrapped, we can now turn it on and off. Another one which is uh, posted in the capacities subreddit, but I guess it's applicable to any uh, app with daily notes, is I'm torn between full-fledged notes on the Daily Notes page or just reference and then branch off. Feels like I'm causing something, a bit of a mountain out of a molehill, but just looking for tips and guidance. So there are quite a few responses here. And hopefully there's something that can also guide you into using the Daily Note as a the place to write everything or just as a reference to then branch off onto main pages. So that was it for capacities. Tana. OP posted this image here, which basically shows on the left hand side, as you can see, the recent. To me, this reads as a little bit of recent entries uh, that have been put into TANA. It's not clear if it's going to be available for everyone or if it was just posted by mistake, because a few of the users in Slack said, I can't see it and I can't seem to activate it. 
So it's going to be interesting to see what the teams make out of this one. But it does seem like it'll be an interesting addition to just having the recent um, nodes and notes that you've included in your TANA workspace. Um, Ev, she posted a no inbox TANA note taking system and how she actually gets things done. So she hasn't processed a capture inbox in over a year and her notes are more organized than ever. So if you want to be like Ev and have something similar, do check out this blog post and video where she goes through of how she sets it up and what she covers within the video and how you can make the most out of her system. So well worthwhile checking out. And then a question that was posted on Reddit was privacy and security. So privacy and security is extremely important to me and my clients and I like taking notes in TANA using my voice and the phone but I'm a bit concerned of the security and privacy of it all. And there are quite a few responses on this one already, but I hope that more people will be able to post on it just to give their thoughts and some of their um, insights as it's a very interesting and important topic. And I think more should be made out of it. So hopefully um, there's gonna be more responses in the coming days with other people's opinion. Luxeek, a few updates from them. So on GitHub CLD Walker, he's created a pull request for a CLI addition. Um, so not 100% sure what exactly this means or what it will add, apart from maybe just allowing you to communicate with the command line interface. But uh, I thought I'd include just in case it's interesting to anyone out there who's dying to have this as an addition within their Luxeek. So it is still a work in process um, with some various different checks going on, but hopefully it's gonna be added soon and in due course. The devs have also been working on a quick add within Logseek, so no matter on what page you are on, you can press a keyboard shortcut, take some notes, and that's going to go to the bottom of your daily notes page. And we can see a very quick demo here. This was posted the week before last, not last week, but I missed it. And we can speed this up a little bit. So you can see he's on the quick add and add to today. He now scrolls away, goes to the content page, quick add, adds that, and there it is on the main page, on the daily notes page. So a great addition to LogSeek just to make sure that you can take your notes without having to navigate somewhere else and lose your chain of thought in the meantime. And then last week they posted about the mobile and real-time collaboration testing, but I haven't really seen much of an update since then, and I have seen a number of users posting if anyone or asking if anyone else has access to any of these systems. I haven't seen anyone responding positively, but I'm sure that the devs are working on it and slowly rolling it out to everyone. So if you haven't access yet, just hang on a little bit more and I'm sure it's just around the corner that you will be able to get access. ClickUp, they've released now some quite a few additions, uh, smarter scheduling, faster loading in lists and more flexible whiteboards. And this was just released a few days in ago. In this week's so ClickUp really update. Worthwhile checking out. And you can see in the video, intelligent scheduling, how it works improved workout workload view, updated lists view as well. So you can see the whole thing here within the video that the ClickUp team has posted, as well as the whiteboard functionality, which seems to be nicely coming along. Ah, fine, they released 0.23 this week and it includes a number of significant updates and most importantly was the Affine Intelligence, uh, allowing you to comment on your posts or your notes self-hosting and the release of the iOS and Android apps. And on this one, you can see a little bit of a demo here and I will post a link to the full description of their release notes, which includes videos and various different things that you can see how they work. Heptabase, they've released 1.6 D4. Uh, that's been released this week and that includes chat. You can now select multiple whiteboards to chat with the AI window, which is a great addition. Uh, the created by filter, improve loading time, enlarge the layout and rearrange the order of items in the whiteboard. So lots of updates within Heptabase and the team seems to be nicely coming along with updates every single week near enough of late or every few days even with some quality updates. So well done to the Heptabase team on that one. Noti, which is very similar to Heptabase, they've also had a number of updates of late. And I thought, what better way to showcase them uh, than posting Anton's video that he goes through and looks at the 30 plus major feature improvements that the Naughty team has been implementing uh, to make it into a little bit of a more of a productivity powerhouse. And that includes auto layout features, mind mapping updates, 
list management and not project organization. So lots of updates on this one and definitely worthwhile keeping an eye out on Anton's videos because he does post about Naughty and a number of other apps on terms of what their updates are and what they've been up to. So thank you for that Anton, much appreciated. And last but not least is Thymer, so no release yet, I um, feel like it's a broken record that I keep saying that, but there is a latest demo that the devs have published which allows us to see journal notes, folders, notes, images, views and PDF attachments. So we can see here it's on the Kanban board, tweaking various different things, opens up a window. It's got the PDF here, which he clicks on it. That opens up the PDF itself. Not sure if annotation is going to be a possibility or not. Closes that. I guess Command K or something to go to the Daily Notes page. Puts that side by side and then goes back to the Kanban board. Navigates to a database and that's that. So definitely worthwhile keeping an eye out on Thymer to see what their updates are and at some point hopefully they will release the app and what they have also released just to prepare themselves for their beta release is a plugins page on their website and it talks you through how the Envisage plugins working, how you can get started with plugins, various different examples of plugins so 3D map, robot cursor, camera board dependencies, work in progress lists, organizational charts, blah, blah, blah. And you can see the examples in a lot more detail here, as well as what they're planning for the future. And the good thing is the system is currently in beta and it's just the initial API is limited. So once we do get the app, once we can play around with it, I'm sure there'll be a lot more comments and opinions raised on that one. So that was it for this week. Thank you very much for being here and I shall see you next week. Bye.